Hello everybody, good morning, and I hope you have a fabulous day today. It is chilly here in Iowa, 22 degrees. It's a little chilly out there, but it's that time of year. Uh, welcome to my channel. Please click the like button, click the subscribe button. I appreciate it and it does help my channel. Uh, uh, Elon Musk warns companies boycotting Twitter means war. Now, Elon Musk continues to stir controversy in his first days as the new owner of social media giant Twitter. On Friday, he warned companies who caved in to the leftist demands that they boycott the platform will deal with his efforts to publicity name and shame them to millions of Twitter users. The billionaire entrepreneur and the world's richest man said he bought the social media company at an overvalued price of 44 billion not to make money but to protect the online public square for free expression and open discussions of all topics I'm glad you know freedom of speech is you can't say anything that you would like to say and that is without profanity or using the Lord's name in vain you know you don't want to do that but just to have a common sentence and get crucified for it. Especially when you think you're trying to help other people to live and not die. But you get crucified for it. I can prove it. Munn's defense of free speech ideas has, of course, angered censorship, craving leftists who have been working to encourage large invest and advertisers to break off their business relationships with Twitter. Musk wrote in a Twitter post on Friday morning that the company has had a massive drop in revenue due to activist groups pressuring advertisers even though nothing has changed with content moderation and we did everything we could to appease the activists. He added, extremely messed up. They're trying to destroy free speech in America. What have I told you? Over and over I've told you in my videos. Yeah, we all know it. I mean, I'm not telling you nothing you don't know. Don't get me wrong. We all know it. Attorney Mike Davis, who previously served as a law clerk for Supreme Court, Justice Neil Gorsuch, posted a tweet addressing the boycott a tenth later Friday morning. He urged Musk to make an aggressive response, taking advantage of his audience of nearly 114 million Twitter followers. He told Musk to name and shame the advertisers who give in so they can be counter-boycotted. Referring to Musk's announcement that he plans to charge verified accounts a monthly fee to maintain their cherished blue check status, Davis urged Musk, Musk to get your $8 monthly subscription going ASAP. Musk replied to Davis Friday evening with his thanks in a statement that a, thermo, a thermonuclear name and shame is exactly what will happen if this continues. Thermonuclear, name and shame. Hmm. The calls for Twitter boycott has been coming from major players in the leftist progressive political world, including the NAACP, Media Matters for America, and the National Center for Transgender, 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 Transgender Equality, Equality, sorry. The groups who fear allowing users to converse freely without strict moderation censorship called on the CEOs of major companies to cease all advertising with Twitter unless Musk agrees to their demands. See, everybody wants to run everybody else. That's something else I don't understand. Everybody wants to run everybody else. You know, it's like, you're my mama, you're my daddy. What do you want me to do now? Really? The Wall Street Journal reported this week that some large corporations have paused their Twitter advertising, signaling some woke businesses are likely to submit to the demands of the leftist political mob. Those advertisers include Pfizer, Volkswagen, GM, Ford, and General Mills. Well... I don't know. And we all know 
Our phones are tapped. Cell phones. They even said in the olden days that uh, the government still had a tap on the home phones. So, when you called up a friend, you wasn't private. They knew everything you were talking about. In the olden days, we've never been alone. And everybody's always said, from the time I was little, we aren't humans, we're just a number to the government. So, you know, we just sit here and we go from day to day and have coffee with our friends and enjoy our life the best we can. But we're not alone. Never will be, I guess. I started another video on Trump and the valet that finally had to come forward and say that Trump ordered him to move those boxes of documents. But not specifically those documents. I mean, they were moving to Mar-a-Lago. When you move, you move everything, don't you? I don't know. I moved 11 times in about, uh, no, I moved 7 times in 11 years. Ask me about moving. I can tell you all about it. Yeah. <laughs> but I won't go into that right now. But anyway, let's find another article here. But anyway, I couldn't do that video uh, because when I got down at the bottom, now this is what's confusing me. And I said this before, what, yesterday I think I did, or the day before, on a video. They got, share the video. If you want to, share it. But when it comes down to the bottom, it says copyrights. Then you get scared and go, well, I can't share that. It's copyrighted. So, in other words, I got scared and I pulled out. And I X'd out the video. Because I thought, well, I ain't getting in trouble. I've already been in trouble once. <laughs> I ain't going to get in trouble again, you know. But that's confusing. If you don't want a person to read it to other uh, tubers, subscribers, friends, family, whatever, then take the damn share off. If you want to share it, then take the copyrights off. I don't understand exactly how that comes about to be the same thing. You know? Now, maybe if I was to take that article, print it out, and take it to the press, and put it in the paper, Maybe that's where they're coming up with the copyright stuff because that wouldn't make sense to me, you know. I've never dealt with copyright stuff before. No. But you can't copyright and do a video and then share the video if you think you're going to get in trouble. To me, that's confusing, but that's okay. You know me. I'm not all there sometimes. <laughs> Well, you know, you get scared. God dang, I got in trouble just for saying a sentence. Yeah. They labeled it, and I got a week's vacation. That's why I was gone a week. Freedom of speech. Yeah, watch what you say. No words, remember? No words. Okay. Let me go and see if I can find something else here. I've been listening to... Uh, you know, in my in my day, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, all the rock and roll and stuff, uh, the tribute to Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah. I've got to see videos of him, Mickey Gilly, his cousin, doing uh, uh, his shows. And the people, oh, galore. The young people, but them were the days. Them were the good old days. And boy, could that Jerry Lee Lewis shake a piano. Oh, my God. Let alone a guitar. I saw him take a guitar, and I mean to tell you, oh, he made that guitar just sing a song over and over. So talented. Bless his heart. You know, he was 80-some years old. And uh, I got to go to his funeral on the YouTube and stuff like that. And... Uh, 
A lot of memories. A lot of memories. Well, let's see down here to this one here, which is um, Hillary Clinton. And she is warning everybody that the election could be stolen. Yes. Now, this is just Patriots.com again. Uh, let me scroll down to the bottom. This might be copyrighted. If it is, then I'm not going to do it. Let me go down. It's right down at the bottom. Very seldom will you see it where you can spot it right off the bat. they got to put it at the bottom first. Uh, no. 2022, just Patriots. But it says all rights reserved. Okay, I also got a deal that um, I'm going to do. Yeah. Let's go back up here, do this one, and then I'll do what I've got up here about uh, that subject. Democrat Con Congressional Campaign Committee Chair Seen Patrick Maloney defended Hillary Clinton's claim that elections could be stolen. They're talking about midterms, you know. Uh, evidently, because this wasn't no, you know, this was just voters. But they say, I don't know, it says, I see, uh, could be, the elections could be stolen, according to Summit News. Maloney went on CBS, Face the Nation, last week reported asserting the right-wing extremists are plotting to steal the next election. In a video in which Clinton asked for donations, for a Democratic organization, she claims that the right will steal the election through a Supreme Court. Really? Right wing extremists already have a plan to literally steal the next presidential election, and they're not making a secret of it, she added, adding the right wing controlled Supreme Court may be poised to rule on giving state legislatures the power to overturn presidential elections. Just think, if that happens, in the 2024 presidential election could be decided not by the popular vote or even the anachronicist electoral college, but by state legislators. That is a big word. Anachronistic. Anachronistic. Electoral college, but by state legislatures. Legislatures. Many of them Republican-controlled, Clinton continued. Maloney has asked by the CBS host whether Clinton's comments were helpful amid this divisive, divisive uh, political climate. Maloney re, uh, responded that both sides need to make sure voting is fair, that there is no fraud. Let's not pretend for a minute that both sides have the same amount of accountability for the loss of confidence in our elections, Maloney said, then taking his aim at Republicans. One side has been out there for a couple of years now, doing everything they can to pretend Joe Biden didn't win fair and square when he did. The comments of the former Secretary of State and the DCCC chair come less than a week away from the midterm elections, which Republicans are projected to pull off massive upsets. After a series of debates where de uh, Democratic candidates did not do well against the Republican challengers, the GOP is pulling ahead. In one debate, Pennsylvania Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman squared off with challenger uh, Dr. M Mimet Oz, Dr. Oz, I just call him Dr. Oz, as shown in a clip uploaded to Twitter, Fetterman struggled to formulate his sentences. Four polls now show Oz leading Fetterman. In another showdown for the New York gubernatorial race, Republican challenger Lee Zeldin cracked down on Kathy Hochul's weak stance on crime and defense of lockdowns early on in the pandemic. Hmm. Okay, let's move on here. I want to get to this other one. Let's put that down. Uh, let's see. Where did I put that? Uh, I hate to move my camera because I might lose it. Uh, 
Where did I put it? I wanted to hang on to that. Oh boy. Well, I guess I don't have it. But it was explaining the difference between all rights are reserved and um, I'll have to see if I can find it again because it's very interesting. And uh, all rights reserved and copyrights. What's the difference between them? And that's what it was explaining. I can't understand why it's lost. I feel my desktop so full of stuff and uh, evidently I must have clicked on it. I'll see if I can find it again later. Yeah, but uh, no, some some places on uh, Twitter and what's that other one? Well, Facebook, anything. But usually on Facebook there isn't too much trouble uh, expressing your opinions. But everybody there watches everything they say. You know, you've got to. But that's, uh, that is taking away freedom of speech. And you can always block anybody that comes on with filthy language. Obscene language. Or, or cursing our Lord Jesus. Block them. Get rid of them. You can always do that. But give us back our freedom of speech when, when it doesn't hurt anybody and it might help somebody. That's my point. Oh well. Okay, people. Seventeen minutes. I better I better get off of here and see what else I can come up with. Okay. Um you are a blessing. And today give someone else a blessing. I'll be back. Laters.